Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What an opportunity today that the Lord has granted us. And we're going to grow into it. We're going to expand in it. And our lives are going to be transformed every time we hear and listen to the gospel. We are exposing ourselves to the raises from that very light of life that transforms every darkness into light. That means whenever you expose yourself to this, this kind of light, something happens to you. If we think that when we expose ourselves to certain, uh, certain things, they have effects and uh, res uh, impact in our lives, how much more? is the light of the gospel. The light of the gospel is more powerful than any other thing you ever find here in the earth. If there is this nuclear energy, the force, the in nuclear energies, if it's one of the powerful or greatest energies that we have here on the earth, imagine that the, la the light from God is much more powerful than the nuclear energy. If we can expose ourselves to this truth, it will definitely transform our lives beyond our expectation because of the power that is into that very light. Glory to God. In Romans chapter 10, verse 10, this is a very beautiful verse. It says, For with the heart man believeth into righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So we do have this duo we were talking about from verse 8 verse 9 and verse 10 we're actually talking about the same thing but then we see some specificity some specific uh, uh, terms and and words how they are uh, very very vital and in this verse 10 he says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so we see that the heart has to be there and also the mouth for the experience of salvation take place. The version called way says, For with the innermost heart must, be, must we believe as the first step towards attaining, attaining righteousness. But secret belief will not suf, uh, su, uh, suf, suffice with the lips must the profession of the beliefs be made as the indispensable condition for salvation. So there's another better version um, that puts it this way, for it is believing in the heart that makes a man righteous before God. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. In his heart, a man believes, and then he is counted just. And with his mouth, a man confesses and is saved. So we have these verses. We have this verse that explains to us that this is what brings about salvation. Remember, salvation is already here and present with us. But we are talking about the experience of that salvation. Is when you acknowledge, believe with your heart. And we explained what the heart is. We explained what is the confession of the Lord Jesus. You're talking about the Lordship of Jesus. You belong to him. His Lord is your, uh, uh, your uh, transferring your allegiance to him. And you are also convinced you have come to the conclusion that indeed jesus rose from the dead see that is the believing in your heart so this combination and then you agree with him using your mouth because what is in your heart will eventually come out from your mouth so the experience of salvation is not hard it's not complicated it's acknowledging what is already there and that is why the preaching of the message is important so so since the greek word homologia basically means to say the same thing you know as we saw it or to be in agreement with someone so the person who confesses jesus as lord agrees with the father's declaration that jesus is indeed savior and lord that's what happens when we to confess with our mouth 
So the inward believing with the heart and the outward confession of the mouth are two simultaneously simultaneous actions which are present in saving faith to experience true salvation. There is no true salvation unless you acknowledge. Trust me, because how can you believe? In fact, it's, it's logic. How can you be saved from what? You have to have, you have to hear some, you have to, to, to receive the information about salvation. You have to know something about salvation. So what, what am I saved from? How? What am I supposed to do? On which basis is salvation, you know, operate? We need to know that. And that is why the information is key. Because once you have the information, you have the, the knowledge, or it's easier then, you know, you know, you are brought to that awareness. See? So then you experience salvation, which is already there. Again, I, inf I insist on this, on this word. It is already there. You only acknowledge what is already there. Your faith does not bring salvation, which wasn't there. Your faith just helps you experience what is already there. So the mentality is the instrument of believing. The mouth is the instrument of acknowledgement. It is by the combination of the operation of these two organs, the salvation is experienced. So this is how you are saved. Confession explains the principle that the faith which is present in the inward life must manifest itself in the outward life. See, this is how it happens even in other, in different areas of your life. Whatever that is filled in your heart, it's brought to the confession of your mouth, that will be your experience. Paul is not actually teaching a distinction between the two, but in interconnection of inward belief and outward confession. So he's not saying, you know, uh, there's a difference between the mouth and the difference between your heart. No, he's actually bringing bo both together. He's saying, you know, these things go hand in hand. They work hand in hand. They operate in the same at the same time. In fact, in his submission here, it's like they work at the same time. They work at the same time. They do operate at the same time. In other words, you cannot believe into something fully, fully convinced of it and not confess it. And this applies, and this, uh, I want to use this to explain what if somebody has no ability to speak? Well, remember, it's the conviction in your heart. Because the conviction in your heart is actually equally true uh, that your mouth is speaking it. Because... You see, for example, Jesus used a word. He, he said in Mark, uh, Mark chapter, chapter 11, when he was teaching about uh, faith, and he said that if you speak to this mount, mountain and do not doubt in your heart, if you speak to this mountain and do not and to be thrown in the in the sea and do not doubt in your heart. So you see, conf, conf, speaking to the mountain is not the key, but not doubting in your heart that the, the the mountain will hear you, will listen to you, is the is where you begin from. In other words, before you speak to the mountain, we have you have to understand that everything can hear you. That is the first message you should learn. You should learn that everything hears you. So, because if you speak without having that conviction in your heart, you will be guessing, you'll be trying to see whether it works or not. And that is already uh, a sign of doubt. And he says, if you doubt in your heart, of course, nothing will happen. <laughs> so the conviction we should have is that Every mountain, any mountain can hear me or anything listens to me. You see, you first have to be convinced of that. Remember, believing in your heart is the full conviction. So if you're not fully convinced of something, then you don't believe it. So the issue with many people, many of us, is not that the mountain cannot move. The issue is we are not convinced that the mountain can move. And before we even move it, in the first place, we question whether it can hear us. And so we are 
already in doubt before we speak. So whether now you speak or not, it makes no difference because the idea here is to first convince, be convinced in your heart that it can listen to you, it can hear you. See what I mean? So how important this is. So he says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It's with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Brothers and sisters, it's also a sign of what happens in our lives. It depends on what we believe. So what we believe is so, so vital. Whatever you believe in your heart. If somebody believes that he can speak to sickness and the sickness will listen to him, it will work. The issue is we don't believe that we can speak to any disease or sickness or any mountain like Jesus said, and the mountain is able to hear us. Because we think this is a non-living thing, therefore it doesn't have any ears to hear us. But I'm telling you, that's not how it works. If you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, See, these are two things that are very vital in your journey. Did you know that it works anywhere and anywhere? I mean anywhere. We have to come to this conclusion that anything we believe with our hearts, when whatever we believe with our hearts, when we are convinced, fully convinced, I'm telling you it's possible. It is possible when it is possible within our hearts. It is not possible when it is not possible within our heart. So most times, like I, I said, we, try, we, we, we blame the outside. We blame the circumstances. We blame the circumstances. When Jesus spoke to the, to the wind, remember when he was with his disciples and they were traveling and crossing over, going to the other side of the sea, the Bible tells us that when he they were in that boat, he slept, was, you know, sleeping. And the disciples were not sleep. When they were not sleeping, they were awake. And then the wind and the waves were too much in the, in the sea. And so they were panicking and trying to, to, to remove the water. And, and they were so scared from within their hearts. So they, they couldn't do anything. The waves were too much. The winds were too much, were too much, and they couldn't manage. So they were crying and they cried out to Jesus. Uh, at times we think that Jesus wants us to cry out to him, no? Because when he woke up, he did, not, uh, he did not appreciate what they did. He just said, you of little faith, how long shall I be with you? So we see Jesus waking up in peace and then says, peace be still. What is Jesus doing? He is at peace inside him. So the issue is not the outside circumstances that surround us. The issue is in the inward peace or inward uh, winds. So the winds were not necessarily out of the, of the disciples. The wind was inside the believers, the, the disciples. And so they panicked, not because of the wind they saw outside, but because on the inside they were, not, they were empty as well. So when Jesus, who was full of peace, seeing the winds on the outside did not change his attitude or mind or made him panic or scared or fear or something, Jesus stood and said, Peace be still. In other words, I'm sharing my peace, which I have on the inside of me, with you. The outside circumstances, cold wind. And the winds received the peace from Jesus Christ, and the wind went calm. What are we saying? He's saying if you believe with your heart. And then you speak. So Jesus did not begin by speaking because even the disciples were speaking, but they were speaking fear. Nothing was happening. But Jesus did not speak fear. He spoke peace. And since peace was his conviction in his heart, he's the Prince of Peace, peace landed on the wind. Glory to God. This is how it works. Brothers and sisters, this is the way of life. You can use it anytime, anywhere. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.